Welcome to BanjoBenClark.com. I'm Banjo Ben, your host here on the website, teaches you how to play guitar, mandolin, but also, of course, banjo. And this is Banjo Week. What a lesson I have for you today. Wasn't that a great arrangement, Lonesome Road Blues? I love that arrangement. I actually didn't come up with that arrangement. That's an arrangement of Alan Mundy's, one of my favorite banjo players, as you know, and also a prior teacher of mine. Well, I guess I'm still always learning from him. Uh, I changed up a few things here and there, but the meat... The heart of that arrangement is an Alley Monday arrangement, and we're gonna have a lot of fun learning it. If you're watching here on the website, BenjaminClark.com, as a Gold Pick member, you have everything you need. This is a big, long arrangement. We're gonna spend some time on this one. I have tons of resources for you, including the tab exactly like I played it, as well as MP3 jam tracks for you to practice along with. So just scroll down for that, as well as the rest of the video segments. If you're watching somewhere else, I'd of course love to have you over on the site. You can come join as a Gold Pick member at BanjoBenClark.com. Have access to this lesson and hundreds more. So without any further ado, let's jump right into Lonesome Road Blues. We're going to learn six solos to Lonesome Road Blues. That's how many I played. What do I mean when I say a solo? I mean one time through the progression, which is 16 measures. Now this is in the key of G. It's pretty straight, straight ahead. We've just got three chords, G, C, and D. All the best songs do, don't they? Um, and primarily the song's going to be played up the neck. This is one of those songs where if you've never learned an arrangement or a tune that lives up the neck, it's a great one to get into. We've really just got a few positions that we need to have under our fingers, pun intended. And so I want to show you those. We're not going to go measure through measure throughout the whole, uh, all of six solos. That would just take too long. Rather, I'm going to point out to you the main things that you need to know, and then with each successive solo, I'm going to show you the different variations and how to play them better. We of course do end up going down the neck. We do have a really nice melodic solo that we're going to learn and then some other tricks and tips for up the neck as well. So let's, let's just briefly, before we even look at the tab, look at a few of the positions that we're going to be using. The first position I want to show you is this E minor position. Now, I call it an E minor position, even though we're using it over a G chord. That's, that's really common. And we're going to play the ninth fret with our middle finger on the third string, eighth fret here with our index, and then our ninth fret here. So you need to be able to jump to that position. And that's one thing about this arrangement. It will help you learn how to just jump there. We're also going to be using our pinky out on the 11th fret to choke it. The next position that we're going to use is very, very similar to that. It's just the C position. All we're going to do is take our ring finger and scoot it up to the 10th fret, and that turns it into a C chord. The next position we're going to use a lot is up here. This, oh, I don't know what you'd really call it. It's really kind of a D augmented shape, but we're using it over a C chord most of the time, and it's the 11th fret here and a 12th fret here. Okay, so over a C chord, that would be the dominant seventh tone, the B flat, and then the ninth tone, that D. Okay, so those are our three big positions. And we're gonna go back and forth between those. There's a few other ones, but the thing that we need to pay attention to is finger economy, right? Position economy, what do I mean by that? I mean, you know, not having to pick up fingers if we don't have to, right? So I know that whenever I play through this arrangement, my ring finger is going to stay on that first string without ever coming off when I'm up the neck. Well, it does come off with that little choke. But then once I go into this position, okay, so you can see that it's staying down. And so we don't want to lift fingers if we don't have to because that means we have to go through the work of putting them down again, right? Let's go ahead and throw up this first line of tab. We'll take a look at a few of the things in this first solo. I'm going to start it off by sliding from eight to 12, and I'm going to do that in a quarter note timing. So one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. And I want to try to make that slide resolute. I want folks to hear it where I'm landing. Now, when I get up there, I'm going to land in this position 12 and 12 with my middle two fingers. And then leave it down, and with your pinky, reach up and grab the 14th fret. Now, one of the other very, very important things that we need to learn how to do in this song is this choke there in measure five. 
call it a choke, you might call it a bend. And let me go ahead and tell you that people do it differently. This is the way that, that I do it. I'm going to choke it the first time I play it on the first beat. So just a, not a big band, just a, one of those. And then in my next one, I'm going to go ahead and bend it up almost a half step. And then as I roll through it again at the end of measure five, I'm going to release it. So slowly it sounds like this. Now, of course, many people would just choke all three of them. And that sounds wonderful. I like the release sound that I get there. But the thing you want to pay attention to is do your choking or your bending after you pick the note. If you start your choke or your bend before you get there, you're, you're not going to get the movement. You're not going to be able to hear that. So we need to practice, slow it down and practice. And then once you land there, measure six, yes, you're landing on that eighth fret, but I want you to immediately get in this E minor position. Then do a forward roll, choking with your pinky. Okay? So once you learn these first four measures here, you've got half the song licked, I promise you. So we're gonna start out with that slide again. Go up to this position, this bar position. Then we're gonna do our little choke bend. Land in our E minor position for the next choke. That may be really difficult for you. That's okay, I want you to work on that. Seriously, if you get down all of those movements that we just learned, you have the majority of this song worked out. You just gotta get those clean. Now as we go into measure seven, we're going into our C chord, and we're coming out of this E minor chord. Nothing changes, nothing picks up. We keep all three of those fingers down. All that I'm going to do is bring my middle finger back down to that eighth fret and slide it to the ninth and then move my ring finger from nine to 10. So here's our E minor position. Slide and then bring that ring finger up to 10. Now I'm going up into that 11 and 12 position and I will typically go up and play the 11th fret with my middle finger but you can also just keep your index finger down so that not much is moving at all. Then back down to that E minor position, measure nine. Notice in measure nine, we have a backward roll there for that E minor position. That's, that's very important to get that down. So this whole line sounds like this. Now, I missed that very first note of measure nine, and that's very important not to do that. We've got to get, we've got to get fast movements, bam, bam. And, and that's what I would encourage you to do, is um, move quickly from position to position. It's got to be almost instant as we begin to play this song faster and faster because uh, it's going really quick and you don't want any muffled notes. As we go into measure 11, we've seen all this before. Here's where the repetition starts. And then in measure 14, I'm gonna slide back up with my middle finger and get back into that bar position to go into measure 15. Okay, that's the same lick that we started out on, but notice that's over a D chord. That's kind of cool, isn't it? And then back into our bend choky thing. And then our backward roll into the E minor. At that point, you have done one solo through Lonesome Road Blues. Only five more to learn, right? But we've learned all the basic building blocks of how to play this song. Now we're just gonna start beefing it up, as I like to say. Bring in some more frills and work on that melodic stuff. That stuff is really fun, and it, it adds a complexity to it that separates you from other arrangements of Lonesome Road Blues. Again, if you're watching here on the website, you've got your next video segment just down below. If you're watching somewhere else, I'd love to have you over on the website. We can learn five more solos for this, as well as get the tabs and the MP3 jam tracks.